All right, so this is gonna be a video about the surface area of a solid of revolution. If you remember the previous video on disk method and washer method, it involved the volume of a solid of revolution, which again, the solid of revolution is just whenever you have a function and you rotate it around some axis, it's whatever solid is formed from that rotation. In this case, since we have this linear f of x right here, it would form a shape that looks like this. If you can imagine it going around this axis, it would form a shape that looks like that. Now, we figured out the volume before, now we wanna figure out the surface area. So this video is basically gonna be breaking down the equation to get the surface area of a solid of revolution. So the first thing that we wanna do though for this is to figure out a way of breaking this down into a really simple shape. And that simple shape that we're gonna break this down into is a cylinder. So we're basically going to be breaking this down into infinitesimally thin slices of cylinders. So then we're just going to be adding the surface area of those cylinders up along that interval and basically that's how we're going to find that surface area of this solid of revolution. So the first thing that we're going to need is the surface area of a cylinder. The surface area of a cylinder equation is as follows. All right, so this is the surface area of a cylinder equation. This right here represents basically the wrapping around the cylinder. So that's the surface area of it going around. This 2 pi r squared is going to be the the area of the ends of that cylinder. So this is because there's two of them, there's one circle on one side and a circle on the other. So that's gonna be the two areas of that. And this is gonna be that wrapping around. Now, the surface area of a revolution does not worry about the end. So I'm not worried about the end of this circle here and the end of this circle here. So we only, we do not need to worry about this. We only need to worry about this two pi r h here. So I'm gonna take this and kind of put an arrow down here. So we're only gonna be using this to figure out the surface area of the solid of revolution. Again, we're not gonna worry about those ends. So we're trying to figure out an equation for this surface area of solid of revolution using this right here. So I'm just gonna rewrite it. So the surface area is gonna be equal to this, but you're gonna be adding up each of those individual surface areas, again, of those infinitesimally thin cylinders that this shape can be sliced into. So that means we're gonna be integrating from A to B, because that means adding up each one of those individual areas along that interval A to B. And then I'm just gonna put two pi r h into that integral. All right, so let's break down each of these variables now. This h is basically just gonna represent the length of each one of those individual cylinders. And that length is basically the same as arc length, if you think about it from the last video. What the arc length is basically just the length along this function right here. So this h is just gonna represent our arc length, which is equal to the integral of a to b uh, of the square root of one plus the derivative squared dx, okay? We went over where this equation came from in the last video, so hopefully you understand uh, what, what this is all about. So what we're basically gonna do is we're gonna substitute this whole thing in for h right here to get that equation, again, for the surface area of the solid of revolution. Okay, this two pi is constant. If you remember our integration rules, we can just put that constant in front of our integral, just to make it a little bit easier to look at. This radius, if you remember the radius from the disk method, it's basically just the distance from here to here. So this is the center of the circle up to the top of the function, okay? And the radius changes as you move along that function. So it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So this r isn't just some fixed value r, it's changing based on whatever the y is. And that y is f of x. So I'm just gonna write f of x instead of r here. So the integral of a to b of f of x times this whole thing right here. So I'm just gonna substitute this in right here. We already have the integral, so we don't need to worry about writing this integral again. We're just gonna put that right in here. One plus the derivative of f of x squared dx. And this whole thing right here represents the equation that we're going to use to figure out the surface area of any solid of revolution as long as we know whatever function dictates that solid of revolution. In this case, it's linear. But this f of x can be anything. As long as you know the f of x and as long as you know the interval from a to b, you'd be able to use this equation right here to figure out what the surface area of a solid of revolution is. So if you have any questions about anything in this video, let me know.